I've always been very green in my thinking, going right back to when I was at university and going off into the Peak District with the BTCV, British Trust for Con Nature Conservation, cutting down trees and fixing head fences and building walls. So I've always thought that way. And when businesses started talking about it as well and talking about reducing our carbon footprint, I thought that would be a good way to move. The key things that we've changed to reduce our carbon footprint are specifically the lighting, because that was pumping out quite a lot of heat, uh, the computers, which were pumping a lot of heat, and the printers, which were doing the same. So we were always very warm, but it wasn't a very economic way of heating the office. So we've changed the lights, and they've now gone to LED um, strip lights. The computers have all been replaced by little tiny boxes about 15, 20 centimetres wide, and they produce less heat and waste less power than the, the great big machines we used to have. And the, uh, the printers have got a ceramic element in them, so it's much easier for the thing to warm up and start again after it's been quiet for a few days or a few hours. The changes we made to try and reduce our carbon footprint were done because we wanted to do it, we thought it was the right way to go. The outcome has that actually, over the course of the last five, six years, has halved our energy consumption. And so, therefore, it's halved the cost to us. So, the argument for a business doing this is that, in the longer term, it's going to reduce their electricity bills dramatically. And if they don't, they'll carry on going up year on year. As a company grows, you use more power, you have more computers, you have more kit, you have more people at desks. And if you can try and keep the, the bill for all of that, the electricity bill, flat, that would be wonderful. But actually getting the bill to go down is a bit of a miracle, to be quite honest. And I, I lay the, the sole responsibility of that and the credit for that at the, at the door of low carbon business. The Essex Wildlife Trust is a very nice little charity. I try to help when I can with sponsoring some of the things they're trying to collect money for. Today they're actually trying to collect money for cottage wood, which is a bit of wood, woodland that I've actually managed to walk around. Nice oak, mature oak woodland with lots of butterflies and squirrels and all the things you'd expect to find in woodland like that, as well as, I believe, dormice. Now that at the moment is in private hands, so what they're trying to do is to bring it into the hands of the Essex Wildlife Trust to look after it, get rid of the barbed wire and improve the site so that the, you know, the butterflies can survive and the, the dormice do well. So at the moment it's a little bit it's forgotten and it could easily be cleared and built on or something like that, so the chance to actually save that is a great opportunity. It's, it's great for us to have local businesses support us because their staff and the, uh, the business owners actually live in the county so they, they walk around our nature reserves, they, they know us, um, they can touch and feel Essex Wildlife Trust so, uh, uh, so it works very well for, for both us and, and them to, uh, to be part of the uh, organisation. Wave Data made a, made a very kind donation to this um, uh, appeal that we're running at the moment to purchase a lovely wood uh, down in uh, down in Dawesheath. What we need is you know 1,700 people to all give us 25 pound each, which um, which sounds uh, not too much money, but collectively it makes 44,000 uh, pounds. And with Charles's help at uh, Wave Data, you know we're already on 13,700 pounds, and the appeal's only been going 10 days, so it's fantastic. Uh, we we support a number of other charities. Uh, we support, we give a little bit of money to, the, to the, uh, the South End Barge Match each year, which helps them to a small degree, I think. But the main contribution we make is uh, two lumps of money that are given on a monthly basis to a, uh, a school's computer room in Zimbabwe. And we also give another equal amount of money to a hospital in Sierra Leone. So any, anything we can do to try and help them is significantly important. And that hospital treats hundreds of thousands of people or has a collection area of hundreds of thousands of people, so it's going to be important stuff for the future for that country. Now, all businesses uh, need to um, give, give back something to the community. It's, it's a good uh, symbiotic pi partnership. We, uh, um, you know, we get publicity for them and they get publicity for us, and um, we're happy that they use our, our logo. And yeah, it, it works very well for us. I, for, I think if you're looking for a supplier or looking for a company to work with and you've got a choice, if you choose the company which is doing charitable stuff and is behaving ethically and is contributing money and contributing help to a, 
a charity that needs help because they don't have to do it, they don't earn any money out of it. It's a charitable thing. And if you're looking for a supplier or a partner, finding a company that's actually doing charitable stuff basically means they're going to behave themselves. They're not going to run away with your money. They're going to be straightforward and easy to deal with and going to be a pleasure to deal with and not unethical or nasty stuff going on. It's going to be a very nice experience.